Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. We're your host, Jeremiah. And Rafina Antonetti. Folks, why are we here this morning? To talk straight about the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing better than the Word of God. Amen? Amen. We've been looking at Proverbs chapter 7, and we are enriched by the Word of God because it keeps pouring out. Mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's the, the, uh, the 13th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The mem is water. Water keeps pouring out. Mem, that is water. Mayim, water keeps pouring out. What's mem? The thirteenth letter of the Hebrew ah. alphabet is mem, yes. and where we get the the word mayim, and the spirit of the Lord was moving upon the face of the mayim, mm. and God said, "Let there be light." Wow. Well, we have to have our face in the Torah, face in the Word of God. Whenever we mention Torah here. It's talking about the Word of God, the law. And we're not strict, so strict that we say, you got to follow every law to be saved. That's not what we're about. We're about looking at God's Word, His law, to teach us how to walk in righteousness. That's what it's all about, right? I mean, if you don't have the book and you don't study the book, how are you going to know what He loves? How are you going to know what God desires of us? The first law He gave us is the Shammah, which we talked about in verse 1, 2, and 3. Of chapter 7 of Proverbs. Right now we're looking at verse 6 and 7. And 8. And 8. <laughs> if we get there, go ahead. So we're going to read just those three verses today? I'll look to go to 7. That's, I'll stay in 7 for a little okay. bit there. So Proverbs 7, 6 and, and seven, 7. For at the window of our house I have looked out through my latest, lightest, <laughs> and I have seen among the simple... I have perceived among the youths a young man lacking sense. Oh boy. Let's go to eight. Passing along the street near her corner, taking the road to her house. Yeah, okay. Yes. Wow, all right. Yes, yes. yes you yes. know, this morning, the Lord spoke to my heart through the scriptures. Thank God he screeps through, he speaks through the scriptures. Mm. You know, there's never a day that I go that God doesn't speak to me. There's never a day that God goes by that he doesn't speak to you. The only problem is that we need to be in a right position to hear. Mm-hmm. You know that? That's right. I told the story a while back about being in my office one time. I'm just playing my guitar, hanging out with Fina. And, and you know, I uh, put the guitar down on the stand. It was next to me. And all of a sudden, the phone rang. And one of the strings on my guitar began to vibrate. Mm-hmm. Man, did I get some spiritual appellations about that. You know what? It was vibrating because the guitar was pointed in the exact position where the phone was. And because the ringing of the phone had a tone in it, it began to vibrate Mm. one of the strings. And I was blessed. And I said, God, please let me be in right position with you where I can always vibrate when you speak your word. Wow, wow, wow. Oh man, speak your word. I, see, I, in my morning prayers, one of my things is I say, God, please open up my mind so that I can understand the scriptures so that my heart can glow for you today. That, mm. I, I want my heart to glow for you today. And how do I do that except by the word of God? Mm. The word of God. Let it mm-hmm. vibrate inside of you. Mm, it will do something to you. And so I was, I was just looking, the Lord spoke to my heart, and he told me why our cities are in trouble. How about that one? Mm-hmm. How, but wouldn't you like to know why our cities are in trouble? Well, let me read why, and then you tell me. I'm looking at, because remember, we're talking about the youth, the simple ones. Why are they simple? Because... The front part of their brain doesn't develop. <laughs> it's not there. developed yet. <laughs> yeah, they say that that the youth, their their brain, the front part of their brain, the lobe doesn't develop to about twenty or something like that. Yeah, but it's not all the youth. Yeah, they keep there's, flip- some, there's some youth that they, have sense. Yeah, they keep they still keep <laughs> flipping backwards. <laughs> okay, so look at look at Psalms 127 verse one. This is what the Lord spoke to my heart this morning concerning this what we're talking about. A song of decree. For Solomon. I looked at that and said, isn't that something? We're studying on Solomon. This is a song of decree for Solomon. It says, except the Lord build a house, they that labor in vain. 
Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wakes, but in vain. Mm. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow, for so he gives his beloved sleep. In other words, stop worrying. God will build it. Mm. Lo, or oh behold, children are in heritage of the Lord, yeah. and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Now watch this. As a arrow, as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Here it is. Happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. And I know what that means. And I said, this is why our cities are in trouble because we have opened the gate to demonic forces mm. in our government, in our families, in our relationships. I mean, you name it. We have all kinds of stuff happening mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. that are entering, listen, that are entering in all these demonic forces and they're beginning to write their laws upon the hearts of people who are not listening to God. Why? Because we're not building the kingdom of God. We're not building what God wants us to do. Now watch this. Why are our cities being destroyed of course because just mentioned because we fail to keep the gate closed uh, uh. it says answer the enemy at the gate god has given us his word so that we can speak to the enemy at the gate the elders of the city were to sit at the gates of the city and examine everything coming into the city and they had the wisdom, they had to have the wisdom of the Lord and the strength of men, watch this, that was dedicated to the cause of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And what has happened is that the church has not lifted up her voice, has not stood at the, at, at the gate or sitting at the gate and speaking to the enemy. Mm -hmm. Well, who is the enemy? See, people will try to even tell you, you can't use the word enemy today or fight because it's what i don't care what people say the bible says we're in a battle mm -hmm. it says put on the full armor of god that's right the word put on put that paul spoke about let me give you a quick picture of that because it is what it means it means to sink into your armor mm -hmm. sink into your armor the way you sink into your pants <laughs> the way you sink into your shirt <laughs> you put on your shirt the way you sink into your shoes sink into the armor of god why because this simple one this person simple behold among the simple ones and let's look at the word simple ones there i'm sure you're going to talk on that aren't you no <laughs> I, don't <laughs> I don't know if i was going to talk about that in particular and what's interesting is that it's a picture of an open mouth or a hole watch this by hanging the standard combine these things together it means a hole mm. or a pole <laughs> a hole made of insertion something it's the a hole made for an insertion uh, like a, you know to put something in it it's the act of intercourse mm. now look what the look what the spirit of the prostitute wants to do the deception is about drilling something into your mind to put something there why don't you come and lay down with me? I made my bed. I got food. Uh -huh. Got spices. See, whenever you listen to the enemy, it's like the enemy taking a, a drill and begin to cultivate your mind. Uh. A while back, a long time ago, I remember when I was first starting in this Christian thing and I began to study, I remember... I was studying on the locusts, and I have taught about this, I'm sure it's somewhere in Talk Straight Bible. We have over 1,200 videos. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I remember studying on the locusts. And what's interesting is that I found that the locusts, they dig a hole, and then they stick their avipository into that hole, you know, that thing behind them. And they lay about 30 to 60 eggs in the ground then they cover it and you don't even know it's there until they give birth or they become alive right they're born and 
all of these little locusts come out of that hole. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I remember the Lord dealing with me because I was going through a lot of mental stuff, man. I came out of a lot of stuff. I came out of drugs. I came out of a world full of sin. And there were so many things that God had to sanctify me from. And he gave me time. I was closed up for God for about three years, just studying the word of God and looking for God. And I remember in the scriptures that the enemy has stuck his avapository in my mind Mm. and in the minds of people. And he lays eggs there and you don't even know they're there. You don't even know they're there until they start popping up all over the place. So what is the simple? You want to be simple? Let me tell you another way that you can be simple. If you want to be simple, say, well, you know what? I'm I'm not really into all this stuff. Let me tell you how to be simple. I'm going to take you to a verse of scripture that simplicity is still has to be filled with the wisdom of God if you want to beat the enemy. Mm-hmm. Now, if you say, well, I, I'm not into all this, all this deep stuff. Okay, fine. But let me tell you what simplicity is in the word of God. Look what it says. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is wise, making, excuse me, this, let me go back, sorry. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So if you say, I'm, I'm, comf- I'm, I'm comforted, you know, with all, with all the simple things of the word of God, well, fine, but make sure that that, your simplicity is filled with the wisdom of God and not be filled with stupidity Mm. because that's what it's all about here. That's right. That's right. You know, you mentioned something about the church fighting. So how, how does the church fight? Does it fight by going out and always doing protests and things like that, which is okay. It's okay. You know, if you have the time to do that, but the thing is, is that in the church, we need to be taught we need to be taught how to fight, how to fight this enemy. And that's only going to come through the word of God, having wisdom through his word that we may go and teach others so that we walk in the ways of God. And that's how we fight. That's right. That's how we fight. That's how we fight our battle. That's how we fight our battle. So the father here begins the story by saying he was at home and was looking outside through a barred window. Mm -hmm. Then he describes what he saw. And of course, I have something on simple. Um, Then he then he saw a group of naive people, a group of innocent, inexperienced young people who were strolling along the road. And among those young ones, his attention was drawn to a young man lacking sense, which, of course, Jeremiah just mentioned that word simple. Lacking sense, which literally means a young man without a heart or a young man lacks common sense, like a nitwit, right? (laughs) Foolish nitwit, yeah. So we see that. Even if we're reading these scriptures and this happened so long, long, long ago, right? So, but today we see almost the same kind of pattern with young people. And, and Ecclesiastics 1.9, it says that which has been is that which will be again. So we're seeing that same pattern just rotating, just coming back around. And that which has been done is that which will be done again. So there is nothing new under the sun. And he continues to say in Ecclesiastes 1.10, is there anything of which it can be said um, see this, it is new. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It has already existed to ages which were before us. So we see the same things happening. History tells us in eighteen in the 1880s, there was an onslaught of prostitution and police corruption. In 19, um, 1930, in 1970, in 1980, it's the oldest, we, it's teenage the oldest, hookers. Yeah, it's the oldest occupation in the world. That's right. Li- live sex, porn pa- um, palaces, triple X rated movies clogged not that Times it's, Square. Remember? Yeah, yeah, it's not even triple X anymore. It's XXX X-X-X X-X. all the way to XXX. 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 Remember when, when, when all of that stuff was going on in um, Times Square? I was hanging out in Times it Square. Wasn't it was crazy. It was crazy. to walk Times Square. Now they've beautified it, 
but don't think that it's gone. That's right. There's a lot of witchcraft okay? there. A it's lot of witchcraft. It's just more sophisticated. That's right. <laughs> Future generations make the same mistake that previous generations have made. That's right. And that is that they learn nothing from history. I like what Chris says. Speak the word. He's right here, right here this morning. Speak the word. Earl Lindsay says, I like this. He says, stop letting them in the gate. Leave all that nonsense outside the gate come on we need that so 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 we don't remember anything no lessons from what history teaches us it is simply forgotten just because we see technology has changed and modernized our lives it does not mean that progress has improved human nature Solomon describes this foolish man um, walking along the street near the corner where a predator woman lives Instead of passing by her corner, he turned down her street that led to her house. So apparently he had intentions of wanting to visit her and perhaps thinking that she could satisfy his lust and show him a good time. And then, then comes the temptation. The woman is aggressive. She stalks the young man like a predator. Mm -hmm. She puts on seductive clothing. She flatters him. She's bold in her attitude That's right. and promise of consequence-free sex. You know, sin is bold. Sin is bold. You want to know that? Sin is bold. It'll, it'll knock on your door. It'll go to your job. It'll go into your relationship. You need to be more than bold with the, with, with the evil that knocks on your door. You need to say, get the hell out of here. <laughs> because that's all sin brings to us. Hell. Hell. And so we need to speak to the enemy at the gate. She uses those tactics, those deliberate tactics. She wins this young man over. She convinces him to engage in sin. And these strategies are not only literal when it comes to sexual temptation, they also can lead to other temptations. And boom, he surrenders. He 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 ceases to resist the woman. That's right. And you know we got to be careful, folks. What we let into our home. Uh oh, wait a minute. Go around your house. See if you have something in your house that displeases the Lord. You know, because we're out there. And we need to be careful what we let into our temple, both physical, spiritually, because the Bible tells us that our bodies is the temple of God and we're to glorify God, glorify God in our temple. Why? Because it's not ours. This, this temple does not belong to us. It belongs to God. And we need to be careful the places that we walk. You know why? Because he says, I discerned a simple, a simple one. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that within this word discern, this is actually a preposition and when, you, when you're looking at, you know, in the English. But actually, the word son is also in that word. The one that builds the house. Listen now. I discern. A son that builds the house, a son where the seed of the community is, a son that constructs a home, a son that becomes the man, that becomes the one that leads the house. I discern that he's simple and he doesn't know what he's doing. In other words, he is destroying his future generations uh -huh. by giving himself to strange things huh. as a matter of fact there's a I, I can't even watch it but the, uh you know you go through netflix and all, and all these things they have uh -huh. a, a series called strange things yeah oh it's, it's evil it's evil it's evil and they got kids playing it yeah. oh man this is crazy we're teaching our children witchcraft mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. incantations mm -hmm. all right the the stuff that they're watching you know oh there's a lot of magic I mean, there's so much stuff that we're teaching our children. They're, they're, they're learning how to become witches. Wow. They're learning how to put spells on people. This is mad. You know, when we're warned about dangers through the word of God, it helps us to recognize and avoid them. That's right. Um, he saw this young man as being foolish, and he did the opposite of what Solomon had counseled. Even in Proverbs 5, he said, keep your way far from her and do not go near the door of her house. First Corinthians, I mean, first Thessalonians 522 admonishes believers to abstain 
from every form of evil. You know, I was thinking about that and we may, you know, we may look at this and say to ourselves, I'm not going to fall for that, right? Because this prostitution, she describes herself as a tempter that's right in your face. So of course we can say, nah, no, thank you. But what if it's subtle? What if the temptation is not so in your face? What if you're broke and you use your last $10 to buy something and the cashier gives you more change than she or he should? Are you tempted to keep it and say, oh, thank you, Jesus. Give it back. My experience, I had an experience with a payphone early <laughs> in our marriage. And back then, that's I'm not I'm not trying to date how old I am here, but <laughs> we didn't have cell phones when we first got married. And I had to call Jeremiah through a, from a payphone in the in the train station. And when when the money when um then when i put the money in more money came out and so i was telling him about it on the phone and he says rafina that's not your money and i said no 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 this is mine uh, this is mine so he says that's not your money you're the, hungry too the, the phone is no good the phone is no good you got to return that money okay well i wasn't i wasn't there so <laughs> I, I didn't return the money but i've learned since then folks so how do you return learned, it? I, said, I said put it in an envelope and yeah it i've learned since the then company. i don't do that kind of stuff anymore Thank so God. Thank God. but and also what if um your boss goes out of town do you still come in on time and stay until your official time is off or do you take longer lunch hours and figure the cats away these are temptations that can present themselves in our lives that are not pleasing to God, that show who we are as Christians and allow others to see where our integrity wow. is. Wow, wow. We're, we're going to continue this because it is delicious. And until we meet again, Shalom. shalom. <laughs>